Quality Adjusted Life Year. Quality in Health Economic Evaluations Part 2. Utility Values. Professor Toomey invites you to a lecture. To make healthcare decisions such as allocating healthcare resources or setting priorities for future programs, qualis are widely used. It's a generic measure of disease burden, including both quality and quantity of life. Quality is represented by what we call utility values, or utility weights whose valuations are expressed on a scale where zero represents a health state equivalent to death and one represents perfect health. Quantity is simply the duration that people live in various states of health. One quality can mean one year in perfect health, two years in a state valued 0.5, or 10 years in a state valued 0.1. In reality, patients experience different health states over time so we usually consider patient profiles with sequences of utility values reported over periods of time. Utility values are subjective, as utility can be seen as a perception of quality of life at a certain point in time, meaning that is not that easy to derive. But there are several methods frequently used. We have direct methods, generally inferring health state utility values from choices made by individuals between alternative lifetime health profiles. We also have indirect methods, involving the use of questionnaires. Let's start with the most frequently used direct methods. The visual analog scale is the simplest approach to get a utility value. Imagine you want to value a health state A. You present the respondent a visual analog scale from 0 to 100 where 100 represent the best imaginable HS, while 0 represents the worst one. Of note, 0 is not death. First, we ask respondents to evaluate what would be the value of this health state here on this scale. In order to derive a utility, we need to risk scale this value, so we need to know where people would place death. On average, people may say around 20. Then you calculate the utility 60 minus 20 divided by 100 minus 20, equals utility of 0.75. It sounds simple, but it is in fact difficult for people to express meaningful values in this way, and this approach is generally not recommended. The time trade-off is a choice-based method, which reflects the length of remaining life expectancy that a person may be prepared to trade off in order to avoid remaining in a subperfect health state. A choice should be made between living in health state A for a pre-specified duration, reflecting life expectancy, for example 10 years, or living in full health for the same duration. Of course, all people prefer to live 10 years in full health rather than 10 years ill. But what if we replace by 9 years in full health? What if we consider 8 years? Or 7? In other words, we determine how many years a respondent would need to live in full health to make this option exactly as desirable as being in health state A for 10 years. If we assume that individual is ready to consider 10 years in health state A equivalent to 7.5 years in perfect health state, then, as perfect health state is equal to utility 1, health state A utility will be equal to 0.75. The standard gamble method usually involves asking a person to choose between an uncertain option where the person either lives in full health or dies immediately, and a certain option where the person remains in an impaired health state A. If we start with people a choice between 100% of living in full health and 100% chance of living in the impaired health state for the rest of their life, of course, all will prefer the first alternative. But what if we replace the 100% chance by 90% chance of living in full health and 10% chance of immediate death? What if we further reduce the chance of living in full health to 80%, then 70%? In other words, we modify the probability of immediate death until the point of indifference where the respondent values the uncertain and certain options equally. If we assume that individual is ready to consider 100% chance in health state A equivalent to 75% in perfect health state, then, as perfect health state is equal to utility 1, health state A utility will be equal to 0.75. In addition to these three methods, we can also use discrete choice experiments, which involves making choices among pairs of health states or life scenarios. This method is sometimes combined with the TTO. 
For these direct methods, one question is, whose preferences to measure? Patients? Makes sense. They are the people who experience the impact of the disease and treatment. General public? Makes even more sense. As in a publicly funded healthcare system, it is society's resources that are being allocated. This question is important because there is some evidence that utilities differ between these population groups. We also have what we call indirect methods involving the use of health state classifications based on quality of life questionnaires. The most commonly used questionnaire is called EQ5D. The idea is to take a simple quality of life questionnaire, which will assign a utility value based on an existing social tariff. All combinations of answers to different questions of the questionnaire represent a health state. The instrument is quick and easy to use, extensively researched and translated into many different languages. An algorithm allows to translate health state into utility. The algorithm's implementation provide utility and are called social tariffs or tariffs. In most countries, they are derived from a large study done in a sample of the general population using techniques such as the time trade-off or the standard gamble. In addition to direct and indirect methods, another one is available. Mapping. Several mapping functions have been developed to predict EQ5D utilities as a function of scores on other quality of life instruments. It's useful when quality of life data are collected in a clinical trial using a disease-specific instrument for which no tariff exists. The development of these mapping functions uses statistical models fitted to data from patients who completed simultaneously the disease-specific instrument of interest and EQ5D. However, in most cases it is still preferable to obtain utilities directly from EQ5D or another instrument for which a widely recognized utility tariff exists to avoid increased uncertainty and error around the estimates. To conclude, EQ5D is now the most widely used method to obtain utilities for the estimation of qualies. Whenever the collection of EQ5D data is not feasible or appropriate, other approaches such as mapping or direct elicitation may be considered. You can download from the description below a note in PDF. If you like the video, subscribe to our channel and share this knowledge with others.